Vladimir Tarasenko opens on Broadway as the Rangers and the Blues pull off a big trade. We've got a big full weekend of action and our women's hockey spotlight. All of that coming up on this episode of the Locked On NHL podcast. Your Locked On NHL, your daily podcast on the National Hockey League. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Friday, everybody, and welcome to the Friday edition of the Locked On NHL podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thank you for making Locked On NHL your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. Happy Friday, Rachel. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Coming off a Flyers win in a shootout, no less, which is a very rare occurrence. So I'm uh, taking it in stride. Well, enjoy the the rare occurrence. I, I know the Islanders never win in a shootout, so uh, I can identify with that. I'm Gil Martin. You can find me on Twitter at Ice Wars NYR VS NYI. With me, of course, Rachel Donner who can be found on Twitter at R Miriam and Rachel, we had a a big trade go down yesterday between the blues and the blue shirts, as it were. And Vladimir Tarasenko, who has pretty much been asking for a trade for two years, uh, finally dealt to the Rangers. Your thoughts on this deal? Yeah, it's interesting because he asked for that trade a couple of years ago. It didn't work out and then had a, pretty solid season last year with St. Louis and looked like things were going to maybe work out there for him. And then this year kind of back to the old story. Right. And, you know, he just hasn't um, played as well, you know, production wise, 10 goals, 19 assists in 38 games for St. Louis uh, while he had 82 points last year. Uh, So there's been a big difference in there. His advanced Stats have dropped a little bit as well. And so, you know, they decided to make the trade. And I think that it's a really good move for the Rangers. First off, I think that uh, it helps them on the wing that they needed on that right side. And, you know, they got the extra player. So they have defensive depth on their third pairing as well. Um, Retaining salary, you know, they got the the blues to do that. And I don't think they had to give up a lot to get them. Yeah. I mean, this is almost certainly going to be a rental, I think, but yeah, Yeah. he definitely gives them a a jolt. And another thing, an area that he may help improve the Rangers power play has struggled this year. They're kind of in the middle of the pack. And yet when you look at the talent on that team, that first power play unit should be doing a lot better than 17th or 18th in the league. So maybe Tarasenko gives them a little, a little juice there. The key to me though, for Tarasenko, he has not been able to stay healthy. And that's something that the Rangers obviously need him to do down the stretch. Yeah. And that's kind of been the story with some of these top uh, free agents, right? So you look at Patrick Kane, you don't really know what's going on with him. Uh, Jonathan Taves has been out as well. And so, you know, this trade deadline has some guys that have some questionable issues right now. And Tarasenko is absolutely one of them. But I do think if you consider it a a rental and the fact that the Rangers didn't really have to give up any of their offensive firepower that they do already have in order to do it, you know, knock on wood, if he gets injured, they're kind of where exactly where they were before. So I I don't think it's a huge risk for them. No, it's not. And, you know, the, on the flip side, from a blues perspective, this is sort of the end of their Stanley cup winning teams era. I mean, trading away Tarasenko is an admission that they're not going to the playoffs this year. And that the core of that team is not going to be there. I, I expect more moves from St. Louis before the deadline. 
Yeah, I think it's really a stark admission that they've got to do some, whether you want to call it a rebuild or, or a retooling or, you know, whatever your your plan is there. I definitely think it's just a huge signal that it's time to make some wholesale changes in St. Louis. Yeah, and we'll see where it goes from here. I Like I said, I expect some more moves before the deadline and then certainly over the off season. So that was the second big trade of this pre-deadline era. But the two players involved in the first big trade met last night at the UBS Arena with Anthony Bevilier facing the Islanders and Bo Horvat facing the Canucks. And it was Bevilier who doesn't get as much attention in this deal, uh, getting the game-winning goal as the Canucks beat the Islanders 6-5. to five. Yeah, it was a, a really fun game to watch just for the drama alone. And with, you know, Horvat scoring, but then Bovillier being the game winning goal scorer in the end, it was just like, you know, you come for the Bo Horvat revenge tour and you stay for the Bovillier surprise plot twist there. Uh, it, it was a lot of fun as a kind of neutral observer to to watch that one and the drama around it. But it's not often that you have a trade like that go down and then have the two teams face each other so quickly. Um, and it was a very uh, offensively, prof uh, you know, proficient game with tons of goals around. And uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. But from your perspective, how did it go as an Isles person? From an Islanders perspective, it, it was an emotional game. I mean, I think they gave a really nice video tribute to Anthony Bevilier on the ice. Uh, I was pleased with the Islanders offense, but boy, 22 giveaways officially credited to the Islanders. Their defense, which is usually their trademark, it's, it's what they build their game around, let them down big time. It, it looked like they got a little bit lazy out there. And the Canucks played their style. They deserved the two points. There was no question about that. Yeah, I think that uh, it, it'll be a good uh, storyline to follow for the rest of the season in terms of how the Islanders do in this potential playoff run with Bo Horvat added to the roster. Yeah, I mean, I like what I've seen so far from him. And I like the way Matthew Barzal has responded to having Horvat on his line. But, uh, you know, there's still more work to be done on the island, I think. Got it. And then, of course, we had the Bolts uh, win over the Avalanche in a rematch of last year's Stanley Cup final. Uh, not the outcome you might have expected from that one. No, but, you know, look, Andre Vasilevsky, outstanding, 30 saves, shut out. And yeah, he just plays well in big games and, and the lightning every year as the season goes on, they just seem to get better and better. Yeah. It's uh every, every year you, you never count them out. <laughs> That's for sure. And, and, you know, as for the avalanche, they are still struggling with consistency and injuries. And here we are, it, it's getting close to the trade deadline. I wonder how they're going to approach things. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, with one more year under their belt, the the Bolts are going to have an interesting situation in the playoffs, especially with the Atlantic being the way that it is and, and getting out of that group. And then looking over at the Avalanche, it's going to be real tough for them to repeat because I think a lot of teams, especially out West, took some significant steps forward. So. We'll see how this one plays out. Yeah, it'll, it'll be interesting for sure. Well, we have got a lot more to get to on this episode of the Locked On NHL podcast. We'll have Erica Ayala joining us for our women's hockey spotlight. But first, Rachel, why don't you talk to us about FanDuel? Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. This year, the only app you need at your Super Bowl party is FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And if you're new to FanDuel, that's even better. They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. Download FanDuel now so you can bet on Super Bowl 57 with a no sweat first bet. You'll get up to $3,000 back in bonus bets. If your first bet doesn't win, FanDuel lets you bet on everything from the money line to point spreads to who will score a touchdown. 
me being the Philadelphia person, I, of course, will be betting on the Philadelphia Eagles in this year's Super Bowl, Go Birds. The FanDuel Sportsbook app is safe, secure, and super easy to use. Best of all, you can get paid your winnings instantly. So join FanDuel today at FanDuel.com slash locked on to claim your no sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. All right, time now for our women's hockey spotlight. So here is Erica Ayala. Hey, women's hockey fans, Erica L. Ayala here. I am your host of Locked on Kraken as part of the Locked on NHL Network, but also your special contributor on our women's hockey, or as I like to say, WoHo Spotlight every other Friday on the Locked on NHL channel and show. For those who I'm meeting for the first time, first of all, thank you for listening and thank you for watching Locked On NHL, part of the Locked On Podcast Network and making us your choice every single day. And I have been calling women's hockey games for the last seven hockey seasons, almost since the beginning of the league, now known as the Premier Hockey Federation, formerly known as the National Women's Hockey League. I am the first black or Latina to call games in that league and at 96 games and broadcasts in hand, not counting some special events, I am the longest tenured broadcaster. Almost at the century mark, folks. But anyway, enough about me. Let's get into the women's hockey spotlight. Now, last time I was on Locked on NHL, we had Commissioner Reagan Carey from the Premier Hockey Federation joining us because the league was about to embark on its first ever all-star showcase in Canada. Now, Buffalo hosted twice, uh, the Nashville Predators hosted, the Penguins, Pittsburgh Penguins hosted, and on and on, the Minnesota uh, Wild. So this was the first time north of the U.S. U.S. border, and it was a time. My company, Black Rosie Media, was on hand, and this is the amazing Angelica Rodriguez with a quick recap. Team Canada takes All-Star Showcase, but Team World steals the show in Toronto. Let's get into that a little bit more. Now, Team World was essentially rest of the world. The players were divided by their nationalities, and so Canadians represented Team Canada. Uh, those from the U.S. represented the United States, and anyone from outside of those two countries represented Team World. And it was Riveters forward Fanny Gasparics who had four goals for Team World in that all-Star Showcase, and she has been fantastic. Uh, she was fantastic, I should say, for Team World. The Riveters are struggling a little bit. We'll get into standings in a minute, but she has been one of the producers for the Riveters, and the reason that they stole the show, this Team World group, is because of their now infamous... Selly, the unicorn horn Selly. That's Fanny Gasparics. Once again, shout out to Tiffany Thompson, who took these photos in Toronto for Black Rosie Media. This apparently is something that comes from the Czech players, from those representing Czechia, including, of course, Team World captain uh, Mrazova, who plays for the Connecticut Will. Uh, and so Katarina Mrazova uh, brought this over along with the other Czech players, and it was Fanny Garat Gasparics that had a lot of celebrating to do for Team World, getting them into the championship game against who else but Team Canada. And speaking of Team Canada, ooh, a little bit of gamesmanship here. Team Canada, you can see Lauren Gable, who also represents the Boston Pride. They co-opted and stole the Unicorn Horn celebration. They ultimately win 3-2. to two. Lauren Gable, for her part, three goals and one assist, is there with Reagan Carey. She's on the right-hand side there in this photo. Lauren Gable in the middle. Uh, Lauren Gable, three goals, one assist, wins MVP for skaters. 
for the All-Star Showcase. And her teammate, Kareen Schroeder, wins best overall goaltender. She was able to make 25 saves to ice it for Team Canada. Congratulations. And not only do Lauren Gable and uh, <laughs> and Kareen Schroeder take home some prize money and, of course, bragging rights for their other Boston Pride teammates, but they also help the Boston Pride sit at the top of the table currently in the Premier Hockey Federation. The Boston Pride have absolutely dominated this season. Kareen Schroeder talked over All-Star Weekend that she had a goal of having five shutouts on her career as a newcomer to the PHF. Well, she has seven. And let's take a look at these standings here right now. The Boston Pride sit at the top of the table with 40 points, 14 wins, two losses. The Toronto Six, 12 Two and two with 36 points. The Minnesota Whitecaps in the mix, 10 wins, four losses, and have gone to overtime twice. And the Connecticut Whales sit in fourth place, eight wins, seven losses, 26 points overall. The Riveters and Gasparics sit in fifth. Right now, we believe that's on the outside looking in. The PHF has not officially released their playoff format, but maybe stick with me and the women's hockey spotlight so we can have some more insight on that. Followed by the expansion team, the Montreal Force, the amazing N. Sophie Betty went down with an injury. So the Montreal Force are set to take on their other Canadian rival, the Toronto Six, this weekend in the only series of action for the PHF. So We'll see if she can return. And the Buffalo Buttes really having difficulty getting wins. Only two on the season. I mentioned Gasparix, Fanny Gasparix, who was amazing in the PHF All-Star Showcase and has been great for the Riveters as well. I also want you to know that she represents Team Hungry. And if you're not already, you should definitely follow Erin Brown, on social media at Rinkside, because right now Hungary, as well as Slovakia, and three other teams are competing in what is known as the Five Nations. Now, this is an opportunity for these teams to have international competition, not technically a sanctioned tournament, but definitely important. In North America, we know it as Four Nations and haven't really seen that tournament in a while, but we'll probably get to that on another Women's Hockey Spotlight. But I want to shout out Erin Brown. She was in Sweden. I know we talked about uh, a few weeks ago the U18 tournament for the women in the IIHF. Erin Brown was there. And of course, you likely remember that we talked about the 14-year-old phenom. She'll be 15 soon. Uh, Nella Lopusanova for Slovakia. She has been on a tear once again, but also Gasparix for Team Hungry. And so again, you can see Erin Brown is following all the action of the Five Nations Tournament being held in Budapest, Hungary. So definitely take a look at that. Gasparix and her Riveters teammate, as well as her countrywoman, Reka Debasi, are not with the Riveters, but the Riveters have a bye weekend. So not the end of the world there. France, Norway, also in that tournament. So again, follow Erin Brown. You can also follow her uh, very own newsletter, Rinkside, where she covers women's hockey as well as covering women's hockey for places like The Hockey News. Speaking of women's hockey news, let's get you over to the PWHPA. That is the Professional Women's Hockey Players Association. They have a barnstorming model. They are all about for the players, by the players. They have four teams that are sponsored or are named after sponsors. So you have Team Harvey, Team Adidas, Team Scotiabank, and Team Sonnet. And the PWHPA just announced that they are going to have their championship series is coming to 
California, specifically to Southern California. And again, as the Locked on Kraken host, I am really excited to tell you about this one because the Seattle Kraken and their ownership group Oakview Group and their AHL affiliate are going to be involved. So here's how it's going to go. You're going to have the um, the four teams play in three different locations in Southern California. They're going to start on March 10th at the practice facility of the Anaheim Ducks, which is Great Park Ice, and then they will play March 11th at Toyota Sports Center, which is the practice facility of the LA Kings. And the championship between the top two teams will be held at Akershire Arena, the home of the Coachella Valley Firebirds, which, of course, is the AHL affiliate of the Seattle Kraken. And on March 12th, a champion for the PWHPA and their secret Dream Gap Tour will be crowned. That being said, the PWHPA, they still have plenty of showcases. And so again, their model is more of a barnstorming model, and they've been able to partner with a lot of men's hockey leagues and teams throughout their tour. And so you can see here at the top that they have coming up starting today, they have their OHL showcase. And so all four teams will take part in that. Then they have a Tampa showcase later this month. And then the Washington Capitals will host them in Washington, D.C., March 4th through 5th. So it's all four teams and the sponsor titled teams are going to make the final championship run. But let's talk about who is at the top of the table. And it's Team Harvey's. They have 27 points overall, followed by Team Adidas. Then you have Team Scotiabank and Team Sonnet. Now you can see here that the top five scorers, you have Marie-Philippe Poulin actually being outscored from an assist perspective by Rebecca Johnston, two players that, of course, have played for Hockey Canada on the women's senior national team. Johnston for Team Scotiabank has nine goals and eight assists, while MPP Captain Canada Captain Clutch for Team Harvey's has nine goals and six assist the leading scorer for the United States Abby Rock for Team Sonnet who's kind of bottom of the basement in the PWHPA but Abby Rock has seven goals six assists I've probably talked about Abby Rock a time or two in my tweets on this spotlight and certainly on Locked on Kraken big fan of her work well, that'll do it for the Women's Hockey Spotlight. Thank you so much, as always, for making Locked on NHL a part of your daily routine. And you can find me, Erica L. Ayala, over at Locked on Kraken and on social media at elindsay 8 I'm going to turn it back over to Rachel and Gil so you can have the rest of your hockey news this Friday. So, Rachel, uh, a big weekend of action coming up this weekend. And the last time that a Sunday schedule will be affected by the NFL with the Super Bowl being this Sunday. So the schedule sort of Sunday light and Sunday matinee, but a lot of matinees on Saturday. And we'll start the weekend with four big games on Friday. The one I'm looking at most uh, to me, Seattle and the New York Rangers at Madison Square Garden. Oh, absolutely. And that will be the debut of Vladimir Tarasenko in New York. So, of course, everybody wants to see that and, you know, where he ends up in the Rangers lineup. But you also look at Seattle. They are, you know, near the top of the Pacific, but they've got a couple games in hand on a couple of teams. Uh, it's a very tight division right now. Every point counts. And this road trip that Seattle is on is real tough. Three games in four days on the road. Um, they played last night in New Jersey. Then they come to Philadelphia on Sunday. So real tough stretch of games for them and very important points for them as far as the playoff race goes. 
Yeah, and, and obviously the Rangers in the thick of things in the Metropolitan Division as well. So this game means a lot to both teams. And it'll be good to see uh, how Tarasenko fits in with the Rangers. Also, uh, on Friday tonight, we have a, the first game of a home-and-home home between Toronto and Columbus. Uh, I'm afraid this one might get a little one-sided. Yeah, I mean, you never know. And, and that's why they play the games. But... Um... I think that uh, maybe maybe Toronto will get distracted by the cannon in this first <laughs> matchup tonight. But yeah, it's uh, I predict a rough go of it for the Blue Jackets. Saturday, uh, amazingly enough, seven matinees, so a very heavy afternoon schedule, and an East-West matchup between Calgary and Buffalo is looking interesting to me. Yeah, and you know, for the afternoon games, uh, of course, because we are at Super Bowl weekend and uh, the post All Star Game stretch of the NHL season, that's when these network changes happen with sports programming, and so we get a lot more matinees. and And this Calgary at Buffalo game is one of them, definitely one of the most interesting matchups. Buffalo has, you know kind of struggled a little bit and they're a little out of the playoff race. Calgary has had a stretch of really exciting games. And I just think that this should be a, an excellent matchup just to see really where Calgary is at right now. But then also does Buffalo have it in them to make a real solid playoff run here and playing at home. I think there's some extra motivation there. Yeah. Should be a good one. Uh, the Flyers hosting the Nashville Predators. That should be an interesting game. And Nashville trying to hang in there in the playoff race. Your thoughts on this one? Yeah, uh, we did a crossover with Anne from Locked On Predators over on the Locked On Flyers show. So if you want to get a real good preview of that one, head over there. But it's going to be a, a real tough weekend for the Flyers, uh, not just because they have to play a Sunday game when the Eagles are playing in the Super Bowl, but uh, at the same time, this Nashville matchup is going to be real tough for them just with the different styles of play uh, and you know, coming off of that real solid win against the Oilers. They're going to have to keep that defensive structure up against a team like Nashville, who is hungry to try and see what they can do before, you know, deciding whether or not they're going to make some moves at the trade deadline and, and do a rebuild. Two more matinees that caught my eye, Tampa Bay and Dallas. That's going to be a, a great East-West matchup. Look, I'm in that one for the goalie matchup alone. Yes. <laughs> should be uh, should be a great one. And, uh, you know, Vasilevsky coming off the shutout against Colorado, uh, going up against Dallas after that. It, if he can pull off a, another strong game, this is going to be a good one. This is really going to be a good one. Yeah, and, and that's part of the uh, matinee doubleheader on ABC on the Mothership Network in the U.S. So uh, hopefully it's a real good game and gets some, some eyes on it on national TV. And then, of course, you have Washington and Boston Alexander Ovechkin going up against the team with the best record in the league in Boston. Tough to win on the uh, any team has a hard time winning in Boston. Do you think the Capitals are equal to the task? I don't know. I I'm thinking Ovechkin scores a goal, but the Bruins still win. That is my prediction. For that I think that's a solid prediction overall. <laughs> Can Colorado bounce back? They're down in Florida to take on the Panthers, two teams that haven't quite lived up to expectations this year, but are still in the hunt. Yeah, and the thing with Florida right now is that they've won three in a row. And so they're back on an upswing. And, you know, with uh, the Avs having a difficult time in their last game, they're looking to come back from that and it should be a really good game between these two teams and I think the Panthers are really trying to to make a show of it right now they are trying to make a run and and they are on the upswing big battle in the Metropolitan Division also the Rangers Vladimir Tarasenko's second game uh as a Ranger 
in Carolina against the first place Canes. Yeah, I am very excited for this one because I think it'll give some indications as to what the playoffs might be like. I, I predict a playoff-like atmosphere in this game. The Canes have won seven in a row. They're 9-0-1 in their last 10. But, uh, you know, we don't know what the Rangers' streak will be at that point, obviously, because they have that other game in between. But as of recording, they've won three in a row. And uh, they've just had some monster results. Uh, and in their previous matchup, the Rangers did win that game. And so I, I think this is definitely a must-watch game if you're watching hockey on, on Saturday night. Devils in Minnesota to face the Wild, two, two teams also. You know, everyone's sort of ignoring the Devils a little bit. You, you have the Rangers and the Canes getting a lot of attention. And the Wild are still hanging around in, in a very tight central division. Yeah, although, man, the Wild, I don't know what's going on with them. And I don't know if they know what's going on with them right now because, you know, they've lost three in a row uh, and they have struggled mightily to try and put complete games together. That is a, a huge issue with them, that they have streaks of, of really good play, but then, you know, just can't ultimately put it all together to get those wins. And, um, I, I'm very curious to see if they're going to make any adjustments against a team like the Devils, which just comes in, you know, guns a blazing every single time. And uh, this could be a good opportunity for the Wild, but, uh, you know, they could be running into a brick wall in this situation. Interesting to see how the coaching staff approaches that one. And then the late game, Pittsburgh in L.A., another East-West matchup between two teams that are in the thick of their playoff fights. and. You know, Pittsburgh is just sort of barely in a playoff spot right now, but it is tight for those wild card spots in the East. Yeah, and one of the things that's really interesting about the Pacific Division right now is that you have the Kings and then you have the um Edmonton Oilers, who are very in very similar spots, but you have the Oilers who have a plus 27 goal differential, and then the Kings who have a negative 10 goal differential. And so, you know, if you look at that in terms of, you know, the Kings maybe having some struggles trying to score, you know, so when they do, it's it's good. But I think that this could be a little bit more of a lopsided matchup than it may seem like on paper. And with the pens being where they are and really wanting to make a last go of it with this core, of course we say that every year, I guess, but um, I, I just feel, I feel a pens win here. Yeah. Very, very possible. Should be a good game. Sunday, four games. The, the latest one starts at three o'clock in the afternoon, Eastern time to, to clear things out before the Super Bowl. Edmonton and Montreal, two Canadian teams going at it, and the Oilers need the points. They do. Uh, after well, they, they picked up one against the Flyers, I guess. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, they need every point they can get. Again, with that Pacific Division, it's absolutely nuts, like how close it is. If you look at um, you know the top team, Vegas is at sixty six points, but then you have Calgary's at 58 points in fifth place. And so very little separation there. So every point counts when all and these of, Western teams are out each. Yeah. And one of those teams is likely to not make the playoffs. Uh, you have Vegas, who you mentioned, uh, hosting Anaheim at three o'clock. But earlier than that, the Flyers hosting the Kraken. And, you know, we talked about Seattle's tough East Coast trip and the Flyers' difficult weekend. Who emerges when those two teams collide? Well, the good news is that nobody's watching because the Eagles being in the Super Bowl. <laughs> but, uh, no, I kid. I kid because it's the afternoon right beforehand. But yeah, it's, it's actually if you're a Philly sports fan, that's a good day watching the Flyers versus the Kraken and then switching over to Super Bowl 57. Yeah, it would be, be a big Sunday, obviously, for Philadelphia sports fans. And uh, good luck to the Eagles in the Super Bowl. That is going to do it for this episode of the Locked On NHL podcast. Rachel, always a pleasure to talk a little hockey with you. And thanks to Erica Ayala for the Women's Hockey Spotlight. 
I'm Gil Martin. I'll be back Monday with three of our local hosts discussing the biggest stories from around the league. Have a great weekend, everyone, and thanks for listening to the Locked On NHL podcast.